This video is sponsored by Setapp. What do you say about a smartwatch that pretty much everyone agrees is the best you can buy? Well, you could say everyone's wrong, but that's not right. You could say everyone's right, but that's wrong too. So maybe, as usual, the truth lies somewhere in between. Here's the thing. Any review of the Apple Watch is incomplete without saying that it's the very best smartwatch you can buy if you own an iPhone. Now, that's partly because Apple intentionally prevents other smartwatches from taking full advantage of certain features. In some ways, the Gen 5 Apple Watch suffers from the same handicaps inherent to most wearables, and it even falls behind some of the competition. Take the always-on display. Along with the new Compass, it's a feature the competition has had for many years. And it's great because you shouldn't need to take an action to see the time on a watch. It should just always be there. But enabling it means that if you forget to charge the thing overnight, you'll be looking at a dead battery by noon the next day. I don't mean to say the Apple Watch is unique in this respect, but a lot of other smartwatches at least do better. The TicWatch Pro and Casio ProTrack F30 use dual-layer displays to eke out two and three days per charge, respectively. The Samsung Galaxy Watch gets about three days, while the Fitbit Versa 2 and Garmin Mark Captain trade features for seven to 10 day endurance. You might say you don't mind charging your watch overnight because you just slap it down alongside your phone and what's the big deal? Well, fair enough. But then you can't use sleep tracking. Now, of course, this isn't always accurate, but even with an approximation, I love being able to see if my sour mood is the result of a restless sleep or just the latest bout of jet lag. Now, it's not that you can't do it on the Apple Watch. The app ecosystem is huge and there are third-party apps for this. But again, the watch isn't going to last you the whole next day if you do. Another thing you might have noticed about other wearables, they look like watches. Call me old-fashioned, but I prefer a certain traditionalism in my timepieces, or at least the option thereof. If you get an Apple Watch, hope you like rounded rectangles, because that's what you're getting. And while it has more apps than any other watch, finding the one you want in this mess of a launcher is just as hard as it was four years ago. Like, this is the Compass logo. It took me three tries to find it. Google's Wear OS, much easier to use in this respect. Now, you know what hasn't kept the Apple Watch from becoming the most successful smartwatch? Any of the stuff I just complained about. And it's not just lock-in. The Apple Watch really does a great job at most things wearable. The screen is bright, vibrant, and sharp. And that counts just as much for the simple watch faces as it does for the photorealistic ones. The notifications come in as reliably as they do on the iPhone. So uh, more reliably than on many Android phones and the vibrations that alert you to them are more refined thanks to Apple's TapDeck engine. Stay tuned to the end for a nasty surprise on this subject, though. You get your choice of sizes, your choice of materials, your choice of how dependent it needs to be on your phone with a 4G edition. Mine is a stainless steel cellular model with GPS, which is why this video is so late. Pro tip, if you want your Apple Watch right after release, order an aluminum one. And you get an easy to understand and fully featured health and fitness suite. And most watches these days track your walks and runs and let you measure your heart rate, but none of them can let you take an electrocardiogram to measure your heart rhythm, except the Apple Watch Series 4 and 5. That lets it help with early detection of things like AFib, a potentially serious heart complication. Also, remember this? I've fallen and I can't get up! Yeah, the watch can detect when you've taken a spill. And if you're motionless for the minute afterward, it calls emergency services for you. My final thoughts on the Apple Watch Series 5 coming up, but first, a quick word on a way to make the most out of your Mac. This video is sponsored by Setapp, the frontier platform that packs 150 plus apps into one curated experience made just for you. If you're a creative tinkerer or just need to get quality work done fast, Setapp is the perfect utility. Within a few minutes of installing it, I'd already dejunked my MacBook using Clean My Mac, edited a photo in Camera Bag Pro, then posted it to Instagram with Flume, right from my desktop. If I could find all that with a quick search in 10 minutes, imagine what you can do in seven days. That's how long you get to trial the Setapp collection. After that, it's one flat fee. That gives you unlimited access to every app in the catalog now and all that are yet to come. You found Setapp. So check it out at the link in the description.
Back to the Apple Watch. Those health features, plus things like international emergency calling in over 50 countries, those are the kinds of things not many other manufacturers are doing. The kinds of things that make me look kind of silly for forgiving the downsides of Google's Wear OS in exchange for, you know, round screens. Then consider the attention to detail that Apple built its reputation on. The digital crown works almost everywhere in the OS, and it gives you little haptic ticks like a mechanical crown would. The Apple Watch is still one of the only smartwatches equally easy to wear on either wrist. The magnetic charging puck clacks on the first time every time. Apple Pay, forgive me, just works. And that uh, nasty surprise I teased earlier? <laughs> It's just a byproduct of this leather band I sprung for. When it moves on the wrist, the tiny slips of leather on leather give me the feeling of phantom notifications. It drives me nuts. But as with every Apple Watch, changing that band is very easy. It all makes for a smartwatch that, just like everyone says, truly is the best out there for iPhone owners. Yeah, starting at $399, it's pricey. But my biggest complaint about it the fact that it doesn't work with my preferred Android phones. And um, I think that says it all right there. For a deeper dive on the Apple Watch Series 5, check out Rene Ritchie's coverage on Vector, from which I've stolen a few shots, linked right here. This video produced based on a retail Apple Watch Series 5 purchased by Mr. Mobile, and of course Apple was given no copy approval rights. They're seeing this for the first time right alongside you. Please subscribe to the Mr. Mobile on YouTube if that's the kind of video you'd like to see more of. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.